Hey there, it's Joe. So this last year Sandvik came out with a new roughing style that they call prime turning. Um, and they say that this can help uh, increase your feed rates and reduce cycle time. Uh, so let's take a look at what they're doing here. So you can see they're feeding in on the back side of the part and feeding away from the uh, chuck. And uh, you can see that they have to plunge into that corner and they got to go at a slower feed rate when they're plunging and then they ramp up their feed rate and rip that material off of there. Uh, so let's talk about what's going on here and the advantages and disadvantages to this, right? So the way that they're able to increase feed rates doing this is due to this angle. Let's take a look at a picture here right here so you can see they got that angle on that cutter there and you can feed at a faster feed rate um, there's already tooling out there doing this just not in the direction that Sandvik is doing it so they, they're feeding towards the chuck uh, with an angle and can have a faster feed rate doing that but it's not widely used because you wind up having that ramp angle right at the end of your part so if you got a part with square corners that's not ideal and you got to go back in there and clean it out right now what Sandvik is trying to solve this issue with the prime turning by feeding in in the back and then being able to do their fast feed rates away from the chuck uh, so that's a pretty good solution uh, on parts that have square corners. But the downside to that is you have to have a good clamping solution on your part, right? On some parts, you're only clamping on there a little bit, but you're using the back face of your jaws uh, to push against when you're turning towards a chuck. So your clamping solution is still good even though you're clamping on there a little bit. Now with prime turning, when you're pulling away from the chuck, um, the back of your jars aren't going to help you, right? So you got to be clamping on the more of the part or you have to have some kind of dovetail solution uh, to keep the part from pulling out. Uh, but then that adds another operation. Now another disadvantage that I see is when it comes to programming, right? With conventional tooling, you can program that at the machine using a can cycle, um, and you can edit that relatively quickly in the can cycle. But with prime turning, since it's doing it differently than we're used to, uh, you're not gonna be able to program that with a can cycle, so you're gonna have to program that in a uh, cam software and have that post out your code and it's going to be a bunch of code rather than a short can cycle uh, and then if you need to edit that you're going to need to edit that in the cam software and then repost it now you might be thinking this just looks like a dnmg so why can't i just use that and do the same thing that uh, samvik is doing with what they call prime turning and my answer to that would be uh, if you look at the tip of this tool it's got a little bit of a different shape to it and I believe they did that so that it's better at plunging into the back of those corners uh, to start the cut um, and then they probably did a little bit different design to make it uh, feed better uh, the way that they want um, but you know you can always try and see how it works so there's some ups and downs to this and then obviously the cost of the tooling i'm not sure what samvik is charging for this um, but you're gonna have to weigh the cost of the tooling your clamping solution um, if you can use the pre-existing tooling if the reduced cycle time is uh, enough to justify all this um, so that's my take on it. I think it can be a good solution in the right circumstances. I don't think it's going to be the best solution for everybody. But uh, it's worth taking a look at. And that's my take on it. And take it easy.